Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Attacker Productions. Today I back out being joined once again by Jake, Nick, and like always, Fluff. What's going on, y'all? Hey, I'm here. What up, people? And like always, there's buttons down below. Feel free to click them. Alright. Alright, cool, thanks. Alright, with well, that being said, today's matchup is an interesting one. So, I was asked in one of the videos to try to do something with Surge Piccolo. Maybe the Unisense could help it out. And those of you who are not familiar with Surge Piccolo, it was a great leader that scried one and then drew a card, and then your turn start and you drew another card. And allowed you to kind of like, I think Aaron's one who kind of explained it to me, you could pick out what your charge card was going to be, and if you didn't like the card, you could bomb it and then take it and then draw another card, which is pretty nice. But it's been eroded to where you scry, place top and bottom, and then, then you draw for your turn. So you lose a lot of the draw potential from the deck. And I'm playing against a... Set one Broly hand control, which is what Nick is piling today. Yeah, I kind of got bullied into playing it because I didn't know what I was going to play. And then Jake was like, well, what, what do you, you mean? What do you mean? I said, please don't play OG Broly. <laughs> and then you said, That's you not know, the way I remember it. Actually, you're right. I said that and then I said, actually, play what you want. Don't let me bully you. That's actually what I said. <laughs> so... So I had a really good. So the first six cards I drew, I looked at them. I was like, I got to keep these uh, because I knew you could very quickly do um, hand control faster and I could hand control you back. So you're like, cool, discard a card. I'm like, All right, I'll discard draw apes. But I had another one in my hand, which is pretty nice. So I started the game with two draw apes already in my hand. So I had a way to recover my hand um, pretty quickly. Yeah, it felt bad for me. Because I was like, haha, I do this. And you were like, all right, I will. It's like, wait, no, you weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is nice to get the uh, Goku off of the Lone Prince there, though. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He's He is a real MVP. Just a 15k crit body that you can play for free and then free removal. Like It's it's huge. Uh, and the more, you, if you have multiple in your hand, you, you can't do the activate main you can only do activate main once per turn, so you can't like recycle him um, the same turn. But you can get him out multiple turns, and I, as you can see, like hand control is real. Like I already just made him discard three, I believe, and it's yeah. turn two already. Three draw leaps. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> oh no! So I had two starting out, and when he hit me with the with his leader, that top card was also a draw leap, and it felt yeah, weird. it was it was rough. That is, uh, that's some value. Yep. So, I, uh, I started the, to charge with the, uh, Tapion because I felt like once you awaken, I'm not gonna have a blocker on board to be able to block with. Because I felt like you're, you're gonna be able to keep my hand low enough where I'm not gonna have many battle cards on the board. And I'd rather to use, um, I guess I drew into a second one. But, and I'd rather use Super 17, sorry, Android 17 as my charge 2, so that way I have two active multicolor energies off the bat. I yeah, and I, I feel like you played the game right, because the, out of the three games I played that night, most, most of them were relatively aggressive, and I, I want to awaken as soon as possible, because my leader's just a draw 2, so I want to try to get to 4 as soon as possible, and with my field card and the SS3 Burley that I discard, I can take my life. But you were playing exactly right, playing my board. And um, once we get some of the unison, playing my unison just to prevent me from awakening the long as possible, which was huge. Um, it definitely kept my my hand low throughout the game. So I did. Bancroft, I was Bancroft and I, yeah. uh, well, sorry, just real quick. Bancroft and I had done a little bit of testing with this leader before the event, before everything kind of got started. And he ended up blowing me out in one of the games that we tested and it was because Bancroft was controlling the field. Like, so instead of swinging into my leader, like I don't think he awakened me until like turn five, but every turn he was clearing my field or trying to clear my field plus ripping my hand or making me combo extra cards to save what was on my field. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I was say. I was like, we, we did some tests and I learned that it's best with this leader because I cannot get um, advantage from swinging at, swinging in general so why am i wasting my energy or wasting my attacks going to your lead to give you um resources yeah and that's kind of the way i like to operate with og broly because the leader has a permanent where you can't attack battle cards 
you, know, you have to, it just says battle card specifically but ever since the whole unison block came out that's really helped the deck inherently because there's been a lot a lot of decks now run unison cards so you have another target to swing at and you don't technically refill the opponent's hand by swinging at their lead so uh, that being able to control what you're attacking instead of a straight face is really nice for this deck yeah and as you can see i'm at like naturally even if i wasn't going against a hand control deck like I still wouldn't have a lot of cards right now, so it's just good having the draw loops already in my drop early on. And I was actually going to ask you here, are you aggressive on warping these apes because you know he's playing a heavy hand control deck, or because there's uh, it's the best use of your energy at the time? Like, if he was playing a different list, would you still warp the ape right there? So, I've played against Nick enough to know that if I put a use on board, he's going to go after it. And with this particular leader, oh, with this unison, I can just take the life as extra resources. So I felt comfortable going ahead and tapping the two to get the um, more cards in my hand. Because I don't, if I recall correctly, my hand wasn't really super great. And I wanted a little bit more, um, a little bit more to uh, fall onto in case I needed to. Because that makes sense. I, I think I had tw like Android 21 in my hand. I think I had my other Unison in my hand. And I think I, maybe a Negate or something like that in my hand. And I didn't want to lose any of those either. And that's why like you've seen me already discard one of my uh, 18 Super Combos. And there's a second one I discard off his stuff because he doesn't have a hand. You know, yeah, that'd be great power. But I'd rather keep the cards in my hand currently to play later. Yeah, I'm pretty sure at this point in the game, I actually had zero cards in hand. Um, just because I was spending all of my resources trying to get rid of his hand. But luck would have it, he was able to recover so quickly. So at this point, I was just kind of sitting there staring to see what he would do. And I was like, okay. Do you play <laughs> the one-drop green Broly that lets you pick up two life? Uh, is it two life or is it one life? It's one or two, I think. You talking about the oh, set talking five about the, or set six one, whatever it was? Six, yeah. really, oh yeah. no, no, no! I don't. That one doesn't really synergize with the deck. I think um, if I have Paragus, uh, which I Paragus the sacrifice, which I do, I just didn't see it this game, or I didn't see it early enough. Um, he can recur the uh, demonic restraint to make me take my own life. Um, Cause whenever that card is recurred, you have the option to take a life. Um, and that kind of hurt um, seeing demonic restraint. I would prefer to see the SS3 Broly, um, the green uh, ISR, I think is what it was called. Yeah. Um, where if you drop, cause you can take up to one, up to two life with that one when you discard, but with the demonic restraint, you only take one. So it's preferable to see the uh, ISR Broly versus the, field card but it's they do the same thing it's really interesting the way that they brought that isr back because from set seven up until vicious rejuvenation it was just unplayable oh yeah absolutely i agree with that like and in this deck it's only really good to have it turn one like you want a hard mulligan for it absolutely just so you can get your demonic restraint out so you're not discarding your own hand anymore and you're protecting your board on your awakened side but yeah it wasn't really that great back in the day but now it's it's a necessary piece like you need it uh, three maybe even four of i mean it'd be great for you right now swing drop it pick up a couple life awaken pick up a couple more cards and you're back off to the races well the problem with that is now um since i already had the field card on hand on the field it prevents me from dropping my cards so i wouldn't be able to do it from leader effect um mm. I, yeah so they're so it's kind of like damn it's kind of a like i said that's why it's more preferable to have the isr you, first, you, you have card. to have it early it's not like it's got any wiggle room on it unfortunately yeah but what I did swing with was the one drop early that came in from the battle evo booster, which he, he when he attacks he will take a life, um, and it gets eleven thousand power. So this is a really with good, that coupled with this is a really good oh, turn for you, um, being able to play that card to take the life, and then the Paragus uh, scrapping the field card, giving you two extra cards in your hand, and then awakening off that. Yeah, well, I mean, you weren't doing it, so <laughs> I just pulled a Thanos, and I was like, fine, do it myself. 
So, uh, and go on. Uh, well, well, one thing I always say is the Bardock Unison, if you play any type of hand control strategy, I recommend the Bardock Unison 100%. Um, it, it, just being able to KO your one drops, giving all of your one drops an extra piece of value by making them discard a card is huge. And then the biggest thing is the combo killing. Uh, the auto on it is huge, um, just because there's so many strategies that are required require some type of combo or there's a card that needs to be in the combo area just being able to say no you don't get to do that is is fantastic and it makes your opponent play super weird and always think about what they're going to combo so it's really nice to use highly recommend it you and i played a couple games this weekend and i remember comboing with cards and saying is that okay is is (laughs) that okay yeah, and sometimes it makes me feel weird because like the opponent will remember it before I do, and I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I can get rid of this." Actually, brewing um, for set fourteen, I'm brewing a blue green Harudagarn deck with the new Harudagarn leader, and um, Bardock. I think is going to be a piece of that because the deck is already kind of resource control anyway. And that Bardock just puts in so much more effort for doing it. And it runs a lot of one drops. So you could like play a one drop, pop it, make your opponent discard a card. Like it's got a lot of synergy in that. Like that that unison is really undervalued. It does so much for what it costs. It it's good in most green strategies. Like I play it in my TN list. It's strong in this Broly list. Like and like you said, you're already thinking about future applications for this card. I, I think this is really one of the better designed unisons in the game. It, it 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 really is kind of an unsung hero of the unison line. Go on, Bancroft. I'm right. sorry. So thinking back on the turn, I comboed off the Ruby Ann because I was thinking of like potentially playing the my secret rare Shin Shinron to the board. And I was like, cool, he's going to combo kill it, and I'm going to do this and be really cool about it. And then I started thinking, like, oh, that's stupid, because as soon as he starts his turn, it's gone. So I'm kind of glad you did not combo kill that, because it allows me to have an extra yeah. combo piece of later on the road. Yeah, it's kind of like a double-edged sword with the combo killing, because if your opponent, your opponent's going to know that... That you have the effect because it's on the card, it's on the board. So your opponent tries to bait you out. It's almost like a mind game that you're playing with yourself if you're the owner of the Bardock card because you're like, is that an important piece? Are they trying to bait me? Are they just doing this combo just to just to mess with me? <laughs> so so it's it's really easy just to because your opponent can psych your your opponent can psych you out without even trying essentially. So you have to be really critical about how you want to use it at the right time because they can they can just pull out. A random 0k5, 0 plus 5k combo go like, okay, now I use my super combo or now I use my rival piece. And it could really mess you up. And, and there I was thinking about playing the, the uh, Zarbon to the field, but then that's when I kind of started connecting the dots about the blocker and how useless it was going to be. So I, if I'm correct, yeah. because of all this like overthinking and trying to figure out what I'm going to do, in this current moment, I forget all about you uh, dorm potentialing me. And I'm about to use yeah. the leader effect to play an energy. Yeah, which we talked about this towards the end of the game. Like, you really had two routes: the play that you did that you're going to make, or doing like a hand control style route just to rip me. Um, and I think either one would have been more viable. But, but I mean, we'll see what you're doing here. Yeah. So here I'm gonna activate main and put the bad omen dough into my drop in order to put it into my energy. And everyone who plays Bad Omen knows that if you two blue, two green, which will allow you to uh, get rid of a battle card and one of your opponent's life, and I accidentally tapped all three of my blue-green energies instead of only two of them, and then tapping the two green energies, which was a mistake on my part. Because now I have a just a solid green energy and nothing else to back it up. That's rough. Yeah. So here I'm going to go and try to swing, and then he's like, you can't. Okay, cool, I pass. Gotta love Dormant. No, it's a great card. It's a great card. I can't use it, though. 
<laughs> Which is funny because I was actually worried about it because you were playing all green unisons. I was like, ah, oh, no, dormant. I, I think <laughs> but, when I played Trevor, he was swinging to my unison. And he's like, I was just trying to bait the dormant. I'm like, it has to be mono green leader. Yeah, multicolor leaders can't use dormant. Yeah. So that's why you don't play it in Cell Surge. Cell Surge would be unbeatable yeah. if you could use dormant. So you played the. Yeah, so. At this point, I'm just like, I think you have like three cards in hand, three in life, so I'm like, I need to win this turn, otherwise it's just over. So the first thing I do is I do the activate main on the Demonic Restraint to play a Broly with six cost um, on the field. Um, and I play the set one SR Broly where you pick two cards in your opponent's hand and discard them, um, which is huge. Being able to pick cards is phenomenal, because uh, the opponent can shuffle as much as you want. You have a really good chance it's of picking something they don't want hit. Like in this case, I hit the Seeker Rare, which doesn't really matter, but I also hit uh, EDK, you, which you that would have been. It wasn't the Seeker Rare. Cocoons, that's what it was. That's what it was. Uh, Cocoons, I mean, which not relevant because there's you didn't have the energy for it, but hitting the hitting the EDK was huge, though. He wasn't able to defend himself and combo out. And I got to keep my hand. You hit the Seeker Rare out of my hand in a friendly game we played as well. Yeah, that Broly. That, that's yeah. Some cars just being able to pick is amazing. So here I'm debating about using the leader's effect to go ahead and just put um, Bad Omen into my energy again, and I'm hoping that that the life I take would be a negate because I think that's a double strike, right? Yeah, the Broly is. Yeah, and unfortunately. It was not in the gate. I think he even said it that way. I was like, it wasn't in the gate. And then you just kind of combo up, and I'm like, that's game. <laughs> yeah. But funny enough, I actually comboed pretty safely because um, I was like, oh, he's going to find some way to get out of it. But um, I had another one drop at hand. So, like, the only thing I could have done after that was tap for a play a one drop and then comboed 15. <laughs> um, but that was, that was the only really way to do it. So, at the end of the day, I mean, hand control beat hand control yeah right? sure i mean you, you did get me finally in that last turn with zero cards in my hand yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it is such a perfect example of how brawly can go from having such a subpar optimal start to boiling out and winning the game overall once they get all their little pieces in place it just takes complete control of everything that's happening in the game well we've had videos in the past where like i i think it was between me and you fluff where i was playing set one bro and you're playing i think the skillless janimba and you had me but i just have to kept on drawing to dormants and just holding off as long as i possibly could until i was able to pivot and once i pivot that was game <laughs> It was like, and I think I've had games against Nick where, you know, Nick doesn't see demonic restraint for one reason or another for like three turns and I'm completely in control. And then he throws that demonic restraint down and starts that plus five bullshit in hand advantage at turn. And it just completely turns the game around. Like it, it's, it's insane how valuable that card is. That's what one card does to a motherfucker. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, and with that being said, Surge Piccolo, eh, it's okay. Um, I, I wish the leader had another way of drawing. Um, but yeah, you know what? I hope you enjoyed the game as much as I did. And with that being said, thank you all for tuning in. Keep in mind, there are buttons on the screen while Fluff does the outro. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. We really do appreciate it. Um, hand controls rogue, right? Right? Comment down below. Do you good. still... Do you, yeah, do you, <laughs> it's, it's not good. Um, maybe it's great. Maybe it's bad. What do you guys think below? Let us know. If there's anything that you want to see, also let us know. But click on one of these four floating videos right here. Maybe it's a video that you haven't seen. We probably do something fucking stupid in the video. So as always, read your card, know your play. Let us make the mistakes so that you don't have to. And as always, fluff out.